Well, hey, friends. Welcome back to the Wolf Den. And what we're going to discuss right here and right now is that right there. We're going to discuss why I chose for a certain kind of fishing an ugly stick tiger rod. Well, the reason that I chose an ugly stick tiger for a certain kind of fishing, even after having a very successful video all about tiger rods. Well, to give you a little history, I do have another very successful video out there describing all about the tiger rods back before they made some changes. Changes to the tiger rods such as the ugly tough guides, all one piece stainless steel guides, their ugly stick sort of proprietary real seat, and the ugly stick gimbal butt, rubber gimbal butt. These are all new, new additions in basically the last year or two, I believe. You know, I use things and then I get rid of them and then I get new and I I recycle stuff like crazy. So I actually had to order two new tigers for a type of fishing that I'm really sort of into and, and trying to do during the heat of the summer here in Jacksonville, Florida. I had tiger rods just like this. They were actually too stiff. And so I'm not using those. I got rid of those years ago and went to tiger jigging rods for what I used to use those for because then they came out with the jigging rods the short stiff jigging rods with the big four grip and the the jigging trigger on them. I talk casting I don't talk anything spinning reel well this information will still work for you even though they do make the same thing in spinning but that's just not one of the topics I'm using on this rod right here a 7.4 to 1 Daiwa Ryoga jigging reel. It's got the big giant handle on it, the jigging handle. Yes, that is a very small reel, it seems, for such a big rod. But the way I'm fishing is just rod holder fishing. The reel doesn't need to be big. I'm not, I'm not uh, needing as much line as... You know, if I was out trolling or something like that. But what this is, is a Tiger Medium Light Action. I never had a Tiger Medium Light. And the reason I got it is because I am fishing large live bait. This drawer keeps opening too, like there's a ghost in here. Um... Uh, I'm using large live baits in the summertime, in the heat, during the day, with customers. I'm using large live baits such as croakers, as you probably already know. I need, when I go out, I would love to have little croakers that big. And also, uh, pogies, menhaden. And I'm using them in relatively kind of shallow water. I'd say 20 feet or less overall. And on a, on a long leader for nothing but, hopefully, giant gator trout in the summer. Because we can't use live shrimp as if I would, you know, in the winter time or even in the uh, springtime. This drawer is aggravating me. It just keeps opening up and up here on the workbench. I'll put the videos in the link below if you missed what I'm talking about, because I have three or four of them, where we're talking about how to target big speckled sea trout in the heat of the summer. And how do you do that? You put your shrimp away. You take everything that you've been doing with shrimp that's in this area, northeast Florida. You take your shrimp, get rid of it, and you're going to use large live baits. A 
18, 19 inch trout has absolutely no problem swallowing a 4 to 6 inch live croaker, 4 to 6 inch live pogey, 4 to 6 inch live mullet. All right? And the reason I got these is in my last video, we caught a tw like about a 24 inch trout, a 19 inch trout, and about a 30, 30 pound redfish. Okay, and that link will be below, if not in the end cards on each side at the end of this video. So you can see what I'm talking about if you're new and you ain't following my channel. But targeting large speckled sea trout in the summertime is a challenge. You want the perfect bait. But you don't want to just gear up for just redfish. Because then you can use a stiff rod. You can, you know, you can do a lot of things with old rubber lips that you're not going to do with a trophy, trophy trout. And the thing that I did before is I was using a 7 foot 6 ugly stick striper rod. Long, buggy whip, number one, to absorb any of the bite, any of the surge. When, a, when you've got a big trout on, he's got that paper mouth, that very delicate mouth. You want the rod to go with that fish when he surges. Not that a giant trout fights all that hard, when he just ate a four to six inch live bait. So you don't have to worry. The reason you're going after these trout is because a lot of people don't. That's my passion, is a lot of people don't. They give it up. They don't even know what to do. Well, I'm telling you what to do. That's what this series of videos that I will have in the links and have in the end cards are going to be, that's what this is all about. Well, this tiger rod, in a medium light action, compared to the seven foot six striper ugly stick, the whole rod just doubles over, fine and dandy. It worked, but we had a 30 pound redfish on it. Whoo, that was one heck of a light tackle fight. So, I'm trying this tiger rod because I've had tiger rods in the past and I know what they're like. It's got a real, real flexible tip. Real flexible. Look at that. Alright. But, down here, it's got some backbone. That is why I chose the medium light ugly stick tiger. So I wanted something that I'm just going to fish in the rod holder, because that's how I'm doing this. I put on just a casting reel, this Daiwa, Daiwa Ryoga, this is the largest one that they make, it's called a 2025, 7 to 4, 7.4 to 1 gear ratio. That is a line burner. And the big handle, ultimately smooth drag, I got it paired up with some uh, Hercules 30-pound uh, braid, and this is, it's going to work. That rod tip is going to telegraph the bite, and when somebody has on a big trout, because the redfish, that's not the reason that we're doing this. We're not doing it for a bull redfish. You can catch the bull redfish, while you're doing it, as you see, will see, and as, if you saw in the last fishing video, but at the same time, we're really going after the trout, and that is the shock absorber that's going to keep the hook from pulling out of a trout's mouth. It's just that simple. Okay, those high modulus graphite rods that are stiff as a board and say, oh, fast action and all that. I, you could probably use them, but in all reality, you really want to take care to not pull the hook on the fish. And since I've been an ugly stick fisherman versus using some of those other rods, we don't break rods, number one. Number two, we don't pull hooks out of fish's mouths. I'm going to have two of them designated 
that's what these it's the only thing that these rods and reels are going to do. Let me show you how I'm rigging it up. Versus the last thing I was doing last time, I've thought about it and thought about it. I was using a rig called my strong arm rig, which is on my YouTube channel. Um, that, that's really not that important to talk about my bottom rig because this is the rig that we're going to be using now. I'm still using my 2 watt kale type croaker hook. About uh, maybe 24 inches I guess you could say of uh, 30 pound mono leader. Actually this is nylon. It's black nylon. I go to a small ball bearing swivel. That's really not that small, but it's small enough. A real quality swivel. I'm going to a glow in the dark. Not that I care that it glows in the dark, but when these are one of those soft beads. Okay, it's a green soft bead. It's a knot protector. And then I'm going to a sliding almond weight because the almond weights just lay on the bottom. They don't roll. They just lay on the bottom. And the reason I'm using this is for the reason that it is sliding. So, when this is laying on the bottom, and that, that pogey and or croaker is out here, and I throw that fish a little slack when I feel some bites or something, that trout, redfish, whatever, can move away. And he can just take some slack right out of this sinker and move away with the bait versus dragging the sinker. If, they, if this was steadfast, like the rig I was just using prior, when the fish eats it, he's going to feel that weight. So we're going a little more stealthy. I'm using light 30 pound leader. I'm using a shock leader up here of the exact same thing, 30 pound, then going to 30 pound braid. The true purpose of this is that right there, but from down here, it's not bending. You can see, it doesn't want to bend very easy. The tip, telegraph the bite, telegraph the, the nervous bait. This isn't stuff that's groundbreaking. I really don't know if there's that many people doing that in my area in the middle of summer. Uh, with the live baits in the river, in the St. John's River in Jacksonville, Florida. I actually had to get these off of Amazon. They are on Amazon because I went initially to the UglyStick.com website and their website had a glitch. It did everything. It took my order, took my credit card, took my everything, took, told me that it was shipped, everything, and it's out there going processing, processing, processing. Turns out they had a glitch in their system and completely screwed me over. They never shipped and they never even charged me. So screw that. Bam. Straight to Amazon. I've got these ugly sticks on my Amazon's Tools of the Trade page where again I'll have links below. Your purchase from my Amazon page helps keep this channel going, helps me get things like this and all kinds of other items to be able to show you and do a show and tell and hopefully and eventually another catching a big trout on that tackle. So I'm hoping that this is going to do it. I like having designated tackle for every single job that I want it to do. I've got so many ugly sticks and so many reels matched up, and now there's just going to be two more. So I think this is going to be a good match. So I just wanted to pass it on. I know there's a lot of ugly stick fans out there. I'm not talking about catfish. I'm not talking about carp. I'm not talking about freshwater, period. And a lot of people ask me questions about do you think that rod would work for a blue cat in Kentucky? I'll be perfectly honest with you, I have no earthly idea. Yeah, I'm an ugly stick ambassador. I am the guy, I am, I got, 
I can't, I'm not even going to show you. I think right now I got like 72 ugly sticks. Maybe, maybe not that much, 68, okay? I got so many, and almost all, almost all of them have reels on them. So, yeah, I am an ambassador for ugly stick, for sure, on YouTube here. But it's not like I'm doing exactly what you're doing at home. You've got to figure out, by watching other people, if that's the rod that you want to try, or if that's the reel you want to try. Okay? But I can tell you honestly, <laughs> most people aren't going to have what was an MSRP, Manufactured Suggested Retail Price, $550 reel on a Tiger rod and be using it just for one thing. Hopefully, nothing but big speckled sea trout. So that's where I come from. Thanks for watching. Put any comments below. Ask any questions. I try to answer everybody's question if they've got a decent one that I can even answer. That's the reason why I'm using these right here. Stiff, stiff down here, really light at the top, not just kind of buggy whippish. They have a little more backbone down in the bottom and because of just the larger handles and things like that. Please check the links cheat if you're if you're interested at all in big speckled sea trout, St. John's River, Northeast Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, this whole entire area. That's my passion and that's what the links and the end card videos will be all about. So subscribe. Click the button and get notifications. I know we all have to say that. Because if you're new to YouTube, you don't know that little bell. And you probably ain't even going to see it on your phone. The phone, I mean, everybody knows I'm not a real fan of watching and doing anything on that smartphone. Because they ain't that smart. Let's put it that way.